Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now with the main headlines. Holy City of Karbala-based Masbah al Hussein Foundation announces success of its Ramadan programs. Human Rights Watch presents evidence of violence against Afghan female athletes to the United Nations. The UN urges immediate ceasefire in Sudan as access to aid is restricted. And Kashmiri Muslims barred from aid prayers in Srinagar's Jamia Mosque for the fifth consecutive year. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear viewers. This is Yunus Dawood, and you're watching Shia Ariz live from London, only on Imam Hussein TV3. The Holy Karbala based Misbah al Hussein Foundation for Relief and Development has announced the success of its large humanitarian campaign, represented by the distribution of 100,000 meals to needy and poor families during the holy month of Ramadan. Hussein Al Adili, the PR's manager of the foundation, told Shia Waves Agency that, based on the recommendations of the Supreme Religious Authority, His Eminence, Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Al Hussein Al Shirazi, the foundation succeeded in the humanitarian campaign to distribute food and meals to needy families in various Iraqi provinces. Al Adili continued that His Eminence repeatedly advises providing the best of services for these families and assisting them in their difficult living conditions during the holy month of Ramadan. He also pointed out that the distribution of food and meals was carried out in cooperation with many charitable organizations and young volunteers in different provinces as well as local leaders. The personal relations manager confirmed that Masbah al Hussein Foundation will continue to carry out such humanitarian projects in order to provide necessary support to poor and orphaned families alike. Human Rights Watch, or HRW, on Thursday submitted a report on violence against Afghan women to the United Nations Special Rapporteur of Afghanistan, International Reporters, today. According to the article, the report also highlights violence against women in Mali and Haiti, exploitation of children in sports in Japan, and gender testing of women athletes. Human Rights Watch documentation focuses on the deprivation of women's access to sports in Afghanistan, where female athletes have been forced into hiding and compelled to destroy evidence regarding their sporting activities. It is mentioned that female athletes in exile are seeking to compete in international competitions as well as representatives of their nation in protest against the prohibition on women's sports participation in Afghanistan's international competitions. Human Rights Watch is calling for sanctions against the Afghan Olympic Committee for its refusal to allow women's sports participation. The news agency also added. The report also highlights the sexual harassment of female athletes by the former head of the Afghanistan Football Federation, Karimuddin Karim, and no legal action has been taken by the Taliban to address the issue till date. The people of Sudan have suffered enough of the devastating war raging inside the country, UN investigators said on Thursday, as the fighting rolls into a second year. Sudan's warring parties must commit to an immediate ceasefire and end attacks on civilians and ensure unimpended un access to humanitarian aid, TRT World cited. United Nations Independent International Fact Finding Mission for the Sudan that the World Health Organization has said on Friday that the crisis in Sudan could worsen in the coming months as the distribution of humanitarian aid and medical supplies remains restricted. According to the World Health Organization, 15 million people are in need of urgent health care assistance and disease such as cholera, malaria and denig are spreading in the war-torn African nation. Let's remind our respective viewers of today's headlines. Holy City of Karbala based Masbah al Hussein Foundation announces the success of its Ramadan programs. Human Rights Watch presents evidence of violence against Afghan female athletes to the United Nations. And the UN urges immediate ceasefire in Sudan as access to aid is restricted. Also tonight, Climate change posing significant threats to global health, says reports. The historic Jamia Masjid in Srinagar, Kashmir, was once again prohibited from hosting congregation aid prayers and its head cleric Mirwaz Umar Farooq was placed under house detention on aid day, Kashmir media services have reported. The Indian authorities locked the gates of the Grand Mosque preventing worshippers from entering the aid for aid prayers, marking the fifth consecutive year of this allowing aid prayers at the Grand Mosque. The act has incited anger among Kashmir Muslims who denounce it as an infringement on religious freedoms and distributing violation of the Muslim community's religious rights. The article also added.
And now we'll continue with some shorter news. Two Iraqis suspected of being involved in the Islamic State's genocide of Yazidis have been arrested in Germany, Middle East, I reported. According to the source, the arrested couple identified as Tawana H.S and Asia R.A are accused of having kept Yazidi children as slaves and sexually assaulting them. The arrest was being hailed as the justice for the persecuted minority. The article mentioned that the brutality inflicted by AIS on Yazidi community during the massacre in Sinjar in 2014 shocked the world, with as many as 5,000 Yazidis killed and thousands of women and girls kidnapped and forced into enslavement. Sweden's Equality Ombudsman on Thursday ruled in favour of Muslim women who had complained of facing discrimination for women wearing headscarf. Andulu agency reported. The ombudsman stated that an airline's uniform dress code policy resulted in the unfair dismissal of women even though her job application had been accepted, the source mentioned. The ombudsman emphasized the importance of balance equality in the labor market and the freedom of religion, ultimately ruling in favor of religious freedoms. As a result of the verdict, the airline was ordered to compensate the woman with 150,000 Swedish krona or 13,982 US dollars. The Italian Coast Guard rescued 22 migrants and recovered nine bodies after a boat overturned in south storm south of island Lepudissa, the Associated Press reported today. The boat had departed from Sfax, Tunisia, carrying 46 people from Guinea, Burkina Faso, Mali and the Ivory Coast, the source said, adding that the vessel capsized due to rough seas and engine failure. The Italian government's restrictions on charity rescue boats have raised concerns about more shipwrecks as some approaches, the article highlighted. It should be mentioned that the UNHCR has warned of more incidents at sea as more people are leaving on unseaworthy metal boats. The US International News Agency Bloomberg has released a new report confirming the significant threat climate change phenomenon poses to global health through infectious diseases. As greenhouse gas emissions immaculate the atmosphere, the Earth is experiencing rising temperatures and altered weather patterns, the report also added. According to studies, these changes create favorable conditions for the prevalence and transmission of infectious diseases. Biting insects, such as mosquitoes carrying diseases like malaria and Danuke fever, thrive in warmer conditions. Climate change is also associated with an increase in extreme weather events, including hurricanes, floods and droughts. These events can have an indirect and significant impact on disease transmission. We have reached the end of today's Shia Wave show. Let's remind our day viewers of today's headlines. The Holy City of Karbala, based on the Hussein Foundation, announced the success of its Ramadan program. Human Rights Watch presents evidence of violence against Afghan female athletes to the UN. United Nations urges immediate ceasefire in Sudan as access to aid is restricted. Kashmiri Muslims barred from aid prayers at Srinagar's Jamia Masjid for fifth consecutive year. And climate change posing significant threat to global health, says reports. You can view the latest news on our Shia Web's website, and you can send news of, your, news of your city or country to be published on a news agency. Contact us on the numbers at the bottom of the screen. Thank you all for watching, and we pray to Allah the Almighty to hasten the reappearance of the mass of our time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, we all have an inclination to the epitome of love. When we rejoice, when times are hard, whatever stage of life